Right, so hello and welcome back to Books and Things and welcome to another Victober video. Today I thought that I would recommend a few brilliant books that talk really interestingly about the theme of gender within the Victorian literature. I have 13 Victorian works of literature to talk to you about today. There will not be any spoilers, I, and I won't go into too much depth about the plot, but I just want to talk about 13 books that I think are really, really interesting in terms of the way that they explore gender, and that I think if you're interested in gender in the Victorian period and in Victorian literature, that you should definitely give a try. I will begin naturally with Charles Dickens because I love Charles Dickens, and because gender in Charles Dickens is like my pet theme, it's what I did my dissertation on at university. One of the things I love so much about looking at gender in Charles Dickens is that it changes dramatically over the course of his books, and his presentation of masculinity and femininity in his early books is very very different to what it is in his later books, and for that reason I would recommend Our Mutual Friend, which is his final novel, partly because it's great, but also because the gender stuff in here is really really interesting. I think that his exploration of gender and his presentation of different male and female characters is in this book at its best, in that in this book we see the most kind of independent women that we do see in Dickens. I also think that if you look at the complexities of the female characters in this book, and at the complexities of the relationships the male and female characters have together in comparison to an earlier Charles Dickens novel such as Nicholas Nickleby. It's much better in here, like so much better in here. I also think that Our Mutual Friend is a really interesting book in terms of looking at ideas of morality and women within the Victorian period. There was this idea within a lot of Victorian discourse that women were in some way innately moral and certainly much more moral than men, and that therefore women in a way had more of a responsibility for morality and immorality at the time, and that women were capable of moralising men in some way. And what I find really, really interesting in Our Mutual Friend is that the character of Lizzie Hexham is very much a moralising figure. She is a beacon of morality and goodness in this book. But what I do have to say is very interesting about Lizzie Hexham is that although she is a woman who moralises men, she is also a woman who moralises women as well. And also it's interesting to note that although Lizzie Hexham moralises one man in this book, there is also one man who arguably her influence makes immoral. I think this is a really brilliant book. Obviously it is my favourite book ever, and certainly one that is interesting if you're interested in gender in the Victorian period. Another very interesting Dickens book to read if you're interested in gender is David Copperfield, and there are two reasons why I think David Copperfield is fascinating in terms of gender. One is to do with the presentation of women and femininity in David Copperfield. There are two central sort of young female heroines. One is Dora Spenlow, who he falls desperately in love with, who is sweet and beautiful and loving and lovely and kind, but a little bit stupid and a little bit pathetic. And then there is Agnes, who is less immediately beautiful and sweet as Dora Spenlow, but is very, very moral, very domestic, very intelligent. I find this dichotomy really, really interesting, because one thing you notice when reading Dickens' work all the way through is that in his early books, most of his heroines are like Dora Spenlow. They are beautiful, they are lovely, they are kind, but there's kind of nothing there. They're not very deep and they don't tend to be able to do much for themselves. But Dickens' later heroines are much more like Agnes. They are independent, they are intelligent, they are very very domestic and in a way kind of angel in the house figures, but it is important that they are intelligent angels, they're not just a kind of beautiful figure of goodness, they also are very intelligent, able to work for themselves. So I'd find David Copperfield really interesting because it falls right kind of in the middle of Charles Dickens's work and you can see a kind of shift from the earlier heroines that are like Dora to the later heroines that are like Agnes, and the juxtaposition between these two kind of brands of femininity are really really interesting. But another thing that's fascinating in David Copperfield Field is the presentation of masculinity, and particularly David's masculinity. But this book is in many ways a building's roman, a coming of age story, telling the story of David Copperfield's life from when he is a young boy until he is a man, and in a way it is a book about how to be a man, or more particularly about how to be a middle class respectable man. It explores his efforts to be respectable, to find a position for himself in society, to help those around him as much as he can, to earn a living for himself, and to support those he wants to support, and to be economically independent. But also it's important to note that David Copperfield's brand of Victorian masculinity is not the stiff, upper lip, repressed brand of British Victorian masculinity. It is very much more an emotional brand of masculinity, and it's actually really interesting to look in Dickens at the role that male emotion plays throughout his books, because he is actually a great advocate of emotion for men. Which leads me nicely on to another Dickens book, Dombey and Son. Dombey and Son is a fascinating book in terms of gender, and I think Dombey and Son is arguably one of the Dickens books in which you get to see the kind of most feminist Dickens. One of the kind of 
feminist aspects of this book is the character of Edith who at one point she makes a incredible speech in one of like the best chapters Dickens ever wrote about the problems of the kind of the marriage market within Victorian society and the way that marriage kind of makes slaves of women and forces women into an institution that does not favour them. The book is called Dombey and Son but actually it's not about Mr Dombey and it's not about Mr Dombey's son it is about Mr Dombey's daughter and how she's excluded from this company Dombey and Son and almost from the family because Mr Dombey doesn't want a daughter he has no time for daughters he doesn't care about having a female child because women and girls are nothing to him because all he cares about is having a son to carry on his company and so the way that he treats Florence and the kind of dismissal of female children is really really heavily criticised in Dombey and Son. But one of the things I find the most interesting about Dombey and Son is that the book is kind of set out as a dichotomy as a battle between Florence's femininity and her father's masculinity and Florence's femininity and Mr Dombey's masculinity are both kind of stereotyped Victorian masculinities and femininities and I would kind of argue that that's sort of done on purpose. Florence Dombey is kind of an angel in the house figure, she is intelligent, she is kind, she is loving but she's also domestic, forgiving, patient, very very moral, everything like a good Victorian girl should be and her father is very 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 repressed, her father definitely subscribes to that sort of stiff upper lip, emotionally oppressed, I only care about business, I care about nothing beyond that kind of respectable middle to upper class Victorian masculinity and the book is kind of set out as a battle between emotional femininity and repressed masculinity in which femininity wins and although this battle between like emotional femininity and repressed masculinity is a bit simplistic it's really really interesting to look at in the book and it makes it a fascinating read in terms of gender in the Victorian period. Moving from Dickens to Bronte I want to quickly mention The Tenant of Welfare Hall by Anne Bronte. This is a wonderful wonderful book one I would highly recommend and really interesting in terms of gender especially at looking at the position of women within marriage in the Victorian period and the lack of independence they had. One of the women in this Helen is trapped in a kind of abusive marriage and it's really interesting to look at the kind of power play between her and her husband, the lack of independence she has and also then the bravery it takes to act as she does in this book. It's also interesting in terms of looking at ideas of duty and marriage in the Victorian period and looking at the way that gender ties into that. Leading on quite nicely from that I also want to mention Jane Eyre. Many interesting things in terms of gender in Jane Eyre. One again to do with the position of men and women in marriage and where the power lies. I also I think there are some interesting dichotomies and juxtapositions drawn in Jane Eyre. For example, the comparison between Jane Eyre and Blanche Ingram. Similarly, the comparisons drawn between Jane Eyre and Bertha. I would also highly recommend reading The Tenant of Welfare Hall and Jane Eyre side by side and looking at how similar the plots are because there are a lot of similarities in the plots of these two books in which you can kind of read both of them as being a very similar plot with the gender swapped and if you think about that it makes gender in these two books even more fascinating. I did make a video about this a while ago which I'll link in the description down below. I would then also highly recommend Elizabeth Gaskell's novel Cranford which is a really interesting book. Cranford is set in a small town in which the majority of the kind of respectable middle class inhabitants are women. It looks very interestingly at a community of women who are independent from men and who rely on female networks of support. These women in this book often feel a kind of disdain for men and are very very proud of the independence they keep from men and that aspect of the book is really really interesting and I do think you can see a lot of like proto-feminist bits in Cranford and the way that this book explores female communities and the relationships and friendships between these women is really really great and this is well worth a read. I would also recommend Thomas Hardy's Far From The Bandit Crowd, a brilliant book for many reasons but one of the things I do really enjoy about this is the character of Bathsheba who in this book is a woman running a farm which is really quite rare in the Victorian period and the way that Hardy explores the way the male farmers around her feel about this and also the way that her own workforce feel about this. The presentation of Bathsheba in the kind of male dominated world in which she is living is really 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 interesting and this is definitely worth a read. And then I would also highly recommend The Half Sisters by Geraldine Dewsbury, a wonderful book which follows two sisters who have the same father but different mothers and very very different lives. We have Alice, one sister who begins a trajectory following a very kind of middle class respectable angel in the house life and then her half sister Bianca becomes an actress which is a thoroughly unrespectable thing for a woman to do in the Victorian period. Although we have the respectable and the unrespectable sister on the surface actually things are much more complicated than that. The idea of this angel in the house is really really dismantled in this book and we get to see that actually a woman who is an actress can be just as moral if not more moral than a woman who is a housewife and in that way the book is an absolutely fascinating exploration of the position of women in Victorian society. Another Victorian novel I would highly recommend in terms of explorations of gender and power is The Egoist by George Meredith. This is not a great place to start with Victorian literature necessarily as it is a rather dense one but it is really really brilliant and whereas a lot of Victorian novels follow a couple in the lead up to 
their eventual marriage or sometimes a marriage and what goes on from there. This book focuses on an engagement. There are two people, a young man called Willoughby and a young woman called Clara and they are engaged and after they get engaged Clara begins to have second thoughts and the book is about Clara's efforts to extract herself from this engagement and where power lies within the relationship in her ability to do this. I think it is one of the most interesting Victorian books I've ever read in terms of what it does with gender and the way that it explores the way power operates in relationships between men and women within Victorian society and the lack of power women can sometimes have it is absolutely worth a read and a brilliant brilliant book. My next book is one you might not expect to see on a list of recommendations from me and that is Dracula by Bram Stoker. This is like my least favourite Victorian novel, one of my least favourite books of all time, but despite the fact that the presentation of gender in it makes me really angry it is still quite interesting to look at and in that sense it's worth a read. One of the reasons why I don't like Dracula is because of the presentation of one female character called Mina Harker who is presented as this kind of ultimate angel in the house where she is domestic and sweet and kind and lovely and the most useful thing she does in the whole book is no train timetables off by heart. The whole of Dracula is imbued with a fear of female sexuality which is really really interesting in terms of looking at gender. The female vampires in Dracula are presented as being kind of hypersexualized and really like voluptuous I think is the word and the way that in Dracula Bram Stoker kind of combines a fear of female sexuality with a fear of the supernatural is really really interesting although it irritates me. Another thing that's really interesting in terms of gender in Dracula is the kind of different brands of masculinity we get because there are several different men in Dracula who end up being like the heroes of the story and they all kind of present this different brand of masculinity. Jonathan Harker presents a kind of respectable middle class brand of masculinity whereas Arthur Holden is very much more the aristocratic brand of masculinity. Jonathan is more domestic but Arthur is the true gentleman and then we have John Stewart who is a doctor who presents this kind of scientific intelligent driven version of masculinity and we also have Quincy Morris who is an American adventurer who presents the more kind of macho variety of masculinity. And I think it's quite interesting to see in Dracula how it takes like all of the different sides and angles of masculinity to like defeat female sexuality in the form of a vampire. Anyway anyway. Another Victorian work I would highly recommend in terms of its exploration of gender is the play A Woman of No Importance by Oscar Wilde which is possibly my favourite thing by Oscar Wilde. It is a brilliant brilliant play which really interestingly explores the position of women in Victorian society especially of women who have lost their reputation and what that might mean. It is both very funny and very feminist which I very much enjoy. Finally the last two things I have to recommend in terms of gender in the Victorian period are two non-fiction pieces. From One is a speech of John Ruskin's called Of Queen's Gardens which a bit like Dracula is the kind of thing that is likely to make you very angry but also is really really interesting and very very useful in terms of understanding Victorian ideas of gender. Ruskin was one of those Victorian men who a bit like Dickens thought that women and men were equal but very very different. Ruskin writes in of Queen's Gardens a lot about this idea of separate spheres that men are made for protection and work and action and women are made for order and morality and sweetness. He also a bit like Dickens subscribes the idea of women being much more innately moral than men and therefore in Of Queen's Gardens basically says that women are to blame for all of the evil in the world because they ought to find immorality much more repugnant because they are so moral themselves and also they kind of do more about it whereas men who are just innately immoral like they can't really do anything about it so it's kind of not their fault. Of Queen's Queen's Gardens does make me rather angry but it's also really really interesting and so useful and informative in terms of a lot of Victorian ideas of gender. But finally another non-fiction piece and that is Cassandra by Florence Nightingale and it is a fascinating though like really hard hitting and hard to read exploration of why being a woman in the Victorian period was really really hard and really boring as well. And one of the things I think is so interesting about Cassandra is that she writes about how thoroughly boring it is to be a Victorian middle class woman because there was just nothing to do and you weren't allowed to pursue intellectual pursuits effectively and all of your time had to be taken up with duties that were frivolous and kind of meant nothing. It's very very angry and very very passionate but absolutely worth a read because it's fascinating in terms of one looking at like everyday life for middle class women in the Victorian period but also at looking at the constraints and oppression that many women did feel in the Victorian period. Obviously not everyone did, I don't think everyone was as unhappy with their life as Florence Nightingale but it's certainly very very interesting to read Cassandra and see how many women must have felt in the Victorian period. So I hope that provides you with some recommendations of good books to read if you're interested in gender in the Victorian period. All of these books, even the ones I didn't enjoy very much, are very very interesting in terms of gender in the Victorian period and if you are interested in looking at Victorian gender I would definitely recommend reading all of them. Thank you very much for watching, please let me know down in the comments if you have any other book suggestions for Victorian literature that deal really interestingly with gender and I'll be back very soon with another bookish video.